Today in Santa Cruz, we are celebrating. It's the 35th anniversary of Food Not Bombs. Welcome to Take Back Your Power and Do It with Food. I'm Joy Bina. Now an international organization, Food Not Bombs provides free food to the homeless and hungry and has branches in countries on every habitable continent. From a humble start sharing vegetarian meals during performances in Harvard Square in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and daily food distributions to the residents of public housing in the Boston area, Food Not Bombs has become a global movement, sharing food and literature in over 1,000 communities. By organizing homes, not jails, housing occupations, free radio stations, food not lawns, community gardens, and setting up really, really free markets in local parks, Food Not Bombs, it's on its way to building the world we know is possible. Food Not Bombs asks the obvious question, with over a billion people going hungry each day, how can we spend one more dollar on war? The late Howard Zinn, the American historian and political activist said, the message of Food Not Bombs is simple and powerful. No one should be without food in a world so richly provided with land, sun, and human ingenuity. No consideration of money, no demand for profit should stand in the way of any hungry or malnourished child or any adult in need. Why is this? Because food is a right, not a privilege. Because there is enough food for everyone because scarcity is a lie, because capitalism makes food a source of profit, and because poverty is a form of violence. You know, the truth is the world produces enough food to feed everyone if distributed equally. There is enough abundance of food. In fact, in many countries, every day, in every city, far more edible food is discarded than is needed to feed those who do not have enough to eat. Yet over a billion people go hungry every day. Here are the three principles of Food Not Bombs. The first one, the food is always vegan or vegetarian and free to everyone without restriction, rich or poor, stoned or sober. Two, Food Not Bombs has no formal leaders or headquarters and every group is autonomous and makes decisions using the consensus process. And last, three, Food Not Bombs is dedicated to nonviolent direct action and works for nonviolent social change. Here in Santa Cruz, every Saturday and Sunday, a meal is served by the steps of the downtown post office. Anywhere from 50 to close to 100 people benefit from the effort, and all the food comes from gray bears and the farms at local farmer's markets. The food is retrieved and delivered to a kitchen where volunteers prepare, deliver it to the post office, serve the meal, and clean up. You know, a beautiful community of people has grown around this effort, and we are always in need of more people interested in the task. So much more could be done with more hands. Santa Cruz has the incredible good fortune to have Keith McHenry, 
the co-founder of Food Not Bombs, living here as a resident. Keith has been working tirelessly for 35 years, spreading the word and doing the work, not only here, but in countless other communities across the country and throughout the world. I'm heading downtown Santa Cruz right now to talk with Keith, hear his story, and celebrate this incredible accomplishment of 35 years of doing this good work. We'll talk with other volunteers and some local folk who benefit by this service, and we will party. Come join me as we celebrate the gift of Food Not Bombs. So here we are at the 35th anniversary celebration of Food Not Bombs. And I'm standing here with the co-founder, Keith McHenry. If you could tell me, being the co-founder, what the beginning was like. How did it start? So it started, um, there's three little stories. One, I was a produce worker at Bread and Circus in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And I was throwing out all this produce and I took it to the projects. And at the projects, um, I got to talking to the people and they talked about this new building being constructed across the street. And they said that's where they're designing nuclear weapons. And it turned out to be Draper Lab. And that gave us the idea, wow, there's hungry people on one side of the street, there's people on the other that are making money building nuclear weapons. We should be called Food Not Bombs. That was in uh, in 79, and right when Bread and Circus opened. And then in, on May 24th, 1980, which uh, this is the 35th anniversary of, a friend of mine, Brian Fiegenbaum, was arrested at Seabrook Nuclear Power Station and his best friends, which was me and seven others, we decided we'd organize a group to defend him and that the first thing we would do is bake sales to uh, raise money for his legal defense. And so we planned that that evening and started doing the bake sales, but they were not very successful. And so around that same time, I had a moving company called Smooth Move. I moved this family, and they had a poster that said, wouldn't it be a beautiful day if the schools had all the money they needed, and the Air Force had to hold a bake sale to buy a bomber. So we bought some military uniforms, went out and did our bake sales with the sign, trying to tell people we were trying to buy That's a bomber. That's where that came from. Yeah. <laughs> so then, after that, we uh, decided we would protest the Bank of Boston because of their investment policies in Seabrook Nuclear Power Station yeah. by dressing up as hobos, making soup out of the food that we um, collected from Bread and Circus and other places, and that we would set it up in front of the stockholders meeting at South Station in Boston. So that night we were got worried that we had this huge amount of vegan soup but nobody to eat it, so we went to the Pine Street Inn with one of the few shelters in Boston. I gave a speech from about midnight to uh, like uh, 12.30 about why we're having this protest. The guys like were so excited, like, wow, a protest like the 60s. So then we, um, uh, because of that, they showed up the next day and we were hanging out with guys from the inn, with business people coming out of South Station, with stockholders, with our friends from the activist community. And the, the homeless guys were like, man, you should do this every day because there's no food for homeless people. And that was just when homelessness started to become a problem because Reagan had just gotten elected and so on. And so that night we decided to quit our jobs and do nothing but collect food, give it to people, and in those days mostly at housing projects, and then do street theater with free meals, vegan meals on the streets at Harvard Square, at Copley Square, Boston Commons. And that started the original Food Not Bombs. Tell us, Abby, how you got involved with Food Not Bombs. What motivated you to do this particular kind of service? Yeah. So I'm kind of new at being an activist. Occupy really touched my heart. I was hoping there'd be a change for the world. And I was disillusioned and sad, but I didn't I didn't stop being coming an activist. So what I found out about during that time was about food not bombs. And what was so cool about food not bombs is you can be an activist, still get across things you want to get across and actually feed people so at the end of the day at least you've done something you, you some people got fed that might have been hungry 
So that's how I got involved about two years ago. And how difficult was it initially to retrieve food? It was really easy. Right off the bat? Right off the bat. So my plate, because of Bread and Circus, I was the produce manager or the produce worker. I would have all this produce and I just got boxes every day. Yeah. And then, uh, it turned out in those days, the tofu companies didn't know about um, how to make uh, um, you know, stuff with scraps of tofu. So we would get four or five five-gallon buckets of scraps every uh, couple of days. And we'd make tofu smoothies. We'd make all this stuff. So we got that. We Then Panera, uh, well, it was Oba and Pond, uh, which is part of Panera Bakery. That guy was really cool. He now has this mega corporation. And um, they would give us, like, the day-old bread there. Warburton's in Harvard Square would give us day-old bread. Yeah. Air One uh, over on, uh, in Brookline would mm-hmm. give us food. The food cops gave us food. Haymarket gave us food. We'd go yeah. down there every, like, Saturday and get, like, stuff at the end of the, me- of yeah. the Haymarket Square. We had so much food, it was incredible. Yeah. So how did it move from Boston to all over the entire world? Well, what happened was I um, moved to San Francisco in 1987, and by 1988 I started a second group. Um, I actually got a grant from American Peace Test to feed the protest at the Nevada test site, and I used that money to buy the pots and pans and the tables and equipment to start the San Francisco chapter. Went out and we did the meal at the Nevada test site and then came back and we started every Sunday, uh, Monday from noon to 2 at Golden Gate Park. Oddly enough, um, we requested a permit and that got us in trouble and the police came out uh, and arrested us on August 15, 1988. And that was on uh, the local newspaper, the Chronicle and the Examiner. Big photo of riot police guarding the food. And then from that, people contacted us. They wanted to uh, get involved. So the next week, a huge number of people showed up, and there was like something like 24 arrests. And CNN had just started like about a year before that, maybe a year and a half before. So it got worldwide publicity of us being arrested for sharing food, and like all these riot police there, and it was real crazy. So then people started writing us letters and calling us from all over the world. And I made a flyer called Seven Steps to Starting a Food Not Bombs, based on the notes I had taken on how I started San Francisco Food Not Bombs, because I realized, well, I never really just started a group from scratch you know I kind of evolved into a group with my friends in yes. Boston and so that flyer I would mail to people and I've slightly updated it over the years once they invented like Twitter and MySpace and stuff like that so I've added those kinds of details but it's basically the same flyer as I handed out started mailing to people uh, before the internet in 1988 so tell us what what is this what have we done here today for the 35th anniversary, yes. what kinds of things are available to the so, people who show up? Over on our little past you, there's um, the free showers over there. So people can come. And I already saw one person taking a shower there. It was great. He came out and he was out. It said it was so exciting to take a shower. That was really cool. We have shampoo, we have towels, we have soap. And we were going to set up two, but I'm not sure how much it's going to get used, but at least we have one person. I, there might have been more people using it. We have at least one person, maybe another person, giving out free haircuts. And we have a barber chair someone donated. Tons of produce. All this is produce given away. Yeah, so what, what I ended up facing 25 to life in prison under the California Three Strikes Law in 1994. The district attorney, Arlo Smith, um, when I settled the case, he claimed I'd been arrested 94 times for sharing free food, um, many of them in violation of a court order. Four, it was 43 counts of uh, felony conspiracy to serve food in violation of a court order. Um, and he claimed that I did 500 days in jail, so I got credit, 500 days credit time served. Uh, When I settled my case, I got convicted ultimately of assault, battery, strong arm robbery in a case where a man by the name of Nick Rommel attacked me in a phone booth at City Hall. He was the mayor's, Mayor Frank Jordan's film commissioner. This was part of an ongoing campaign to drive us out out of public and to keep us from sharing food. So um, bottom lining basically means that you're responsible for the meal from start to finish. Um, So we arrive before everybody else and that's when we meet you in the morning, um, who 
you're so wonderful to drop off all the food and also go to the farm afterwards. And so we set up the tables and the cutting boards. And as the volunteers come, we sort of coordinate and make sure that everybody knows what the meal's going to be. So it, um, we just kind of decide uh, basically what the meal is going to be based on the food that we have. And, uh, and then we get everybody working and, and going. And so after that, when the meal's done, we bring all the food here. We drive it in the truck. And then we serve it and we clean up. And we just make sure that everything's tidy and, and that, you know, there's no trash on the ground. Yeah. And I have been, like, basically all over the world. And uh, more, the most recent visits were in Indonesia and the Philippines and Mexico. Yeah. And... Um, when I got to the Philippines, I was really amazed. And what they do there is they not only, so they share like a tofu breakfast in the morning. And mostly children come with their parents, but lots and lots of kids. Then they do an art class where they all like draw pictures. The most recent photos I saw of that were the, the carrot and the fist logo. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. actually changed all the, they had the children put different vegetables and fruits and stuff in all these like, um, uh, in the fist, it was really beautiful and colored them in. And then they do an art show that, um, while the Food Not Bonds volunteers are cooking the meal. Yeah. And they talk about their art. And then at the end of it, they bring out all the food and everybody eats. And they do this like all in about 30 cities in uh, the Philippines. Oh. I went to Indonesia and I went and visited like three chapters, four chapters, and then. I come to this one Food Not Bombs group, and they do things like they're feeding, uh, um, there's protests to defend uh, traditional markets because they're trying to make it into malls and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, all the, They're trying to stop like uh, coal mining and clear cutting, and there's a lot of activity like that. And I get to this one Food Not Bombs group, and, and they're telling me, wow, why did you only visit like so few groups in Indonesia? We have groups in over 100 cities, and they read off like, well, in, in Java, there's this many groups in Sumatra there's this many groups and then recently I'm like I get an, uh, um, a woman that's making a documentary about food not bombs her husband went to Cambodia for a film workshop and this person had a documentary about Cambodian food not bombs I found out there's a Burma food not bombs I went to Reykjavik, uh, Iceland, and the people there were telling me that the meal on Saturdays evolved into a march to the parliament building that ultimately overthrew the government, and um, and they had, uh, you know, like arrested the, the or charged the president, who was also the head of the National Bank, of fraud and everything, and they made a new constitution, not the Funa Bombs did, but this whole thing like just yeah, yeah. torpedoed out of yeah. some conversations apparently at the Food Not Bombs table every Saturday in downtown about three blocks from the parliament building. Isn't that like amazing? Crazy. Yeah. So Africa, the same, it's just, I mean, I did food in St. George's Cathedral in uh, Addis Ababa yeah. and hundreds of people waiting for us. And yeah. It's just incredible, all these things that yeah. wherever you go. For me, it was the only healthy, warm and full meal that I could rely on because I have different food sensitivities and being completely financially um, broke, it was really hard to, to pay for gluten-free items or vegetarian kind of food. So when I came, I would come pretty hungry. Um, I had all my children with me. I was um, homeless with my four kids. And we'd come and we'd, we'd see Food Not Bombs and I feel like immediately we were just comforted. Everyone was so beautifully nice, so giving, so warm. And uh, we would come and we'd eat a very delicious vegetarian meal. And uh, we look forward to that every Saturday and Sunday. So um, I always told myself, I said, when I get housed, if I ever do get housed, I'm going to use my kitchen and I'm going to buddy up or I'm going to help them in any way I could, physically, whatever it took. Yeah, so and tell us what happened. I sure did. I got housed in November. In November. And uh, we got a little townhome right up the way. Yeah. And I've utilized the space that I have to help and give back. Um, right away, I went into January 1st making Angel Love Army. And that... Uh, little project that we got going is something that assists anyone with anything. There's really no limitations. If someone says, I need help, I'm going to figure something out. And if I can't do it myself, 
we will guide and direct them to the right resources. Yeah, what and a so testimony of the generosity yeah, of the human heart. Yeah, been, you have demonstrated. Um, it's it, it was like a dream for me. So yeah. when I finally did get housed, I said, "That's what I'm doing." Yeah. And um, we've worked on. This is what we've been doing regularly: is coming here every Sunday at four and handing out over a hundred plus homemade fresh burritos, That's like right. soaking beans and cooking rice, everything homemade and slow and scratch and uh, putting all the love into it and you know a little music on and yeah. we get through it and yeah. and then we truck it down here and yeah. now yeah. here we are we're just going to keep pressing forward and um, I don't go on any donations I actually rather refuse any financial help I know that sounds pretty weird <laughs> most do but I have a faith in people and I have a faith that we're going to rise as a community and we're not going to need to take money I think it's it's, it's okay, people need to do that and others do it, but I'm not going to be about it. I feel like we can survive and thrive off of more of an exchange and a, and a kind of donation that way, beans and rice or, you know, yeah. the actual things it takes to make this happen. Yeah. 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 So this food it has just been collected today from Live Oak Market. A number of farms there donate. So this is fresh, organic produce, all of it. So not only do we supply food, meals that are cooked, but families that are in need can come here and grab what they want for the week and have gorgeous organic vegetables. As a resident of our community here, can you speak to what level of importance do you think Food Not Bombs plays? Well, I think it's interesting that uh, Food Not Bombs and Keith and Abby have really brought a kind of a social justice uh, focus to feeding people and being out in the community and really doing the kinds of things that before I think were not accepted in the community. I think it's because that their emphasis is so much on social economic justice. I think yeah. it's something that really resonates with the everyday person in Santa Cruz. And so when they see people at the post office as they have been for some considerable time now, feeding the homeless, feeding people who are hungry, uh, talking to people who are less fortunate, reduced circumstances, and helping them out in whatever ways they can, I think it's really brought much more of a mainstream acceptance of that kind of activism to Santa Cruz, and I think that's really been their true value. And you've participated, you've come and you've shared food. And... Oh, sure, you know, whenever I get an opportunity, it's my pleasure, my privilege, really, to come and participate in whatever way I can. As a homeless advocate in Santa Cruz, uh, this is the kind of thing we need more of. We yes. need to really bring mainstream acceptance to the fact that people who are experiencing homelessness in Santa Cruz are actually members of our community yes. and that they really can be vital and important and contributing members to our community. And I think through the social justice focus that Keith and Abby has, particularly with the Food Not Bombs, that really has become uh, something that people uh, resonates with people and I think it's something we'll, that we'll really build on in the future. Yeah. Oh, the is on the way. Tell us about the literature table that is included in all the meals and also how Food Not Bombs has, has expanded to include really, really free markets and other kinds of actions. It's not only about food. Right, Primarily well, it is, but well, what yeah, else? Well, I find that it's um, very important to have a banner or sign that says Food Not Bombs that um, you have literature that talks about um, all kinds of local issues and global issues um, so that it evo instead of being like a charity where you're going from place to place to get meals you're actually coming and it's like a little miniature festival with them, where the literature kind of encourages dialogue about social change issues because really um, I just went to the 40th anniversary of the founding of Food First with Frances Moore LePay, who was a huge inspiration um, with her book, Diet for a Small Planet. And she and the people at, at Food First point out that there's not a scarcity of food. As you can see here, we have tons of food, and we always have tons of food. It's The issue is access to food. And like when I was in Ethiopia, you would see all this food leaving the country on containers to fly to China and to the Middle East and to yeah. Europe. But there's like literally two million people facing starvation. So the, the real solution to ending world hunger is not just growing more food. 
it's actually um, making it so that the food is uh, accessible to people, that it's not too expensive, that it's not like all profit driven. Yes. Um, that food, can, and I just read, I've read several people Facebook me in the last couple of days about how France has made a law against throwing away food. Yes. That it must be given to people to that eat. That was exciting to it's read. It's incredible. Yeah. So that consciousness, that idea is something that Food Not Bombs is trying to promote with the literature table on the streets, but we've also done things like street performances, puppet shows, um, live music to bring people to the, the uh, table to mm -hmm. like talk to us. Um, we take food to like protests and, and we try to get literature like uh, here we have literature from all the different social groups that we can are in solidarity with so people find out about other movements besides Food Not Bombs. So it's like an, an info shop or a, a newsstand or something where you come and you can find out all these things about all the different like Monsanto, the March Against Monsanto and why we're against genetically modified foods or anti-homeless laws mm -hmm. or why is our tax money going to the military instead of to uh, basic human needs. Mm -hmm. um, news about protests against the wars that are happening or um, you know why animal agriculture is a, a central uh, cause of, of the drought and climate change. These things we try to have on our tables in trying to make it like the, so rather than you just come and hand out a lot of food real fast and walk away try to stay two hours, three hours um, make it a festival may, uh, invite everybody so we have three principles the food's always vegan or vegetarian and free to everyone without restriction, rich or poor, drunk or sober. The second one is that uh, we uh, have no leaders, that we include the people that are eating with us in, the, in helping make decisions and helping participate in the actual project. That there's not like an us bringing food to a, a them. Uh, and that the third one is that we're dedicated to nonviolent social change, that it's not about like being a charity, but that we're trying to change society. And so those three principles are the things that have connected all the nearly 1,000 or maybe even more than 1,000 Food Not Bombs chapters. So there's like a fist, it might not be my drawing, but somebody else's drawing, holding some kind of uh, uh, vegetable or, or fruit or something. Um, and that those three principles, and that's uh, basically what connects all of us together and that we go out and we're trying to talk and ex exchange ideas with the community to try to build a transition towards a, a non-violent world where everyone has all their meats net because we know that everyone can have shelter everyone can have clothing everyone can have the food that they need that's and nutritious food and that it's a matter of hoarding by the political and economic system that is denying people these uh, basic rights. Take back your power and do it with food hosts. Joy Bina and Rita Rivera are both authors. Check out Joy's book, The 10 Most Nutritious Recipes on the Planet and A Step into Radiant Health. And Rita Rivera's book, Milks Alive, 140 Delicious and Nutritious Recipes for Fresh Nut and Seed Milks. Is it possible that Food Not Bombs will move from being a colorful subculture to becoming part of the foundation of a new society? A society of contributionism, of peace, of justice, and of well-being. Time will tell. Thank you for coming to the celebration of Food Not Bombs, and perhaps you've been inspired to join us. Start your own Food Not Bombs or donate to this worthy cause. If so, please go to the website for instruction. And until the next time, I'm Joy Bina, and this is Take Back Your Power and Do It with Food.